name's Gizmo, and I'm a pig. I've made an incredible discovery about the speed of light, and I want to tell you about it with the help of my glamorous assistant, Boob. Boob, go fetch my telescope. I've recently been making observations of the moons of Jupiter. This was partly out of scientific interest, and partly because that's where Poob comes from, and sometimes I think he gets a bit homesick. Ah, thank you, Poob. Anyway, while making these observations, I made my incredible discovery. Light moves with a finite speed. Oh, I know it sounds crazy. Light is just there, isn't it? How can it take time to travel? Well, I've got news for you. It does take time to travel. In fact, the light which is now shining off Poob's shiny little eyes is taking about two nanoseconds to reach you depending on how far you're sitting from the screen. You are seeing Poob in the past. Take off those ridiculous medieval clothes, Poob. Now, how, you ask, did I come to this startling conclusion just by looking at a crummy little moon? You can see it through my telescope. (coughs) Oh, there, 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 Poob. One day you'll go back. This is the moon Io. It orbits Jupiter. At the top of the moon, you can see the Tvashtar Paterai volcano exploding, which is actually what sent Boob into space in the first place. Now, as Io moves in orbit around Jupiter, it passes into and out of the shadow that the planet casts. Sometimes, we can see it from Earth when it emerges from the shadow. It just pops back into the light. We call this an emergence. Now, the very first thing I noticed was that I orbits Jupiter very fast indeed. I measured the length of time it took between two emergencies and it took 42 hours, 27 minutes and 33 and a half seconds. By contrast, it takes our own moon a whole month to orbit the Earth. Hence the name month, month, moon. Moon. Now, at the time I was making these observations, Boob was away on business for almost two months. When he got back, I wanted to show him his little moon emerging from the shadow of Jupiter, and he got very excited. Based on my measurement of the orbital period, I worked out that the next emergence would happen at 9pm precisely. So we set up the telescope and waited. At 9pm on the dot, I told Boob to look. There was nothing there. Poob was inconsolable. For almost five minutes he gibbered about the possibility that his home planet had been obliterated by a volcano. Then, in a final moment of despair, he looked again. Io blinked into existence, four minutes and forty-nine seconds later than I predicted. Poob was overjoyed, but I was confused. How had I got it so wrong? Then I realised... In the months Poob had been away, the Earth and Jupiter had moved around the Sun in their orbits. When I first made the measurement, by happy coincidence, the Earth and Jupiter were just coming out of opposition. That is, the point where the Sun and Jupiter are on opposite sides of the Earth. Now, the Earth was a distance of one astronomical unit from the Sun, and Jupiter was about 5.2 astronomical units, meaning that Jupiter was 4.2 astronomical units away from the Earth. Two months later, Jupiter had hardly moved at all because it takes nearly 12 years for Jupiter to do a full orbit round the Sun. But the Earth had moved a sixth of a year round its orbit and that is about 60 degrees. Now, elementary trigonometry gives the following picture and you can pause the video while you check it if you feel like it. It's good for the soul. Now, Pythagoras' theorem, which I rediscovered in an earlier episode, allows us to calculate how far the Earth is from Jupiter. That is, you take 4.7 squared plus 0.866 squared and then take the square root and you get 4.78 astronomical units. But it was only 4.2 astronomical units away when I did the first observation, so that meant it was now 0.58 astronomical units further away. And the light was taking 4 minutes and 49 seconds longer to travel that distance. And so, 
It would take just over eight minutes for the light to travel one astronomical unit, that is the distance from the sun to the earth. So light takes about eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth. I think this is an amazing fact and it was well worth the distress it caused my assistant. And in time, I'm sure he'll agree with me. What's that, Poob? The same calculation was made by a Danish astronomer, Ole Ruma, in 1676. Nonsense, Poob. They didn't even have astronomers in those days. Well, tune in next time for the latest on quasi-modular forms, and we'll see if this neutrino can move faster than the speed of light.